Hello, fellas. It is late March 26, 2022. And this is my wife's car. Now, I take care of it. Okay, so I do all the maintenance on it. I'm gonna do a long-term review on this car. I think it's got like, uh, let's go see how many miles it's got. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how many miles it's got. All right, it's got 112,000 miles, 615. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's talk about this car. Okay. This is the base model 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine and um you know what honestly i've got mixed reviews about this car my wife likes it and the reason why she likes it is because i maintain it okay now inside i'm going to tell you what honestly i do not like the construction the quality of the seats of these cars um at least the base model because look at that it's a freaking horrible coffee stain. And if you guys got suggestions on how I can get that out, let me know. I would appreciate it. My wife drinks coffee every day. So let's talk about the car. Let's talk about what I've done to it. We're back. Let's talk about what I've done to it. Now, I just put these bad boys on. Uh, these are the Falcon Wild Peak at trail okay the trail edition and here's what they look like you know they're they're not bad okay um i just put them on like a couple weeks ago so nice and deep tread design looks aggressive enough i don't know everybody keeps telling me that you know, the Facebook forum says that, oh, yeah, they're awesome tires. So I'm going to find out. I got really sick and tired of putting on de dedicated snow tires for this car. Um, the dedicated snow tires obviously are unstoppable. But I am hoping that I don't have to do that anymore. So that's the reasoning for these Falcon Wild Peak tires. Okay. In terms of cargo capacity, it's mediocre. So I got this um, this cargo carrier on top. Everything I bought, actually the cargo carrier, I bought from walmart.com. The, the rack is off Amazon and it's called uh, Cargo Lock. Both of them seem to be holding up really well. Okay, so it was cheap. It works, it functions. I haven't had any problems with it. What else can I ask for more? Um, mechanically, honestly, you know, this car has been more maintenance and work than I've wanted to put into it. Um, let's take a look at the engine. So right now I'm still using Subaru filters. Um, I think I put in a new belt. I think I did put a new belt in. Um, yeah, it looks really good still. So I put a new belt in. It was actually really easy to do. Um, all you need is go online, uh, Amazon or wherever, and search for tools to change a serpentine belt. And... You know, you just put the wrench in, you loosen it, boom, belt pops out, you put the new belt in, super quick and easy. That is one thing I'm going to give a bonus to for the Subaru Forester is the serpentine belt, changing it out. It's a cake. I also like the engineering on that. It's good. It makes the oil filter changes really easy. The other thing that I did to make my oil filter changes easy as I put a Fumoto valve on. I don't know if you can see it. Let me see. Oh, God. Huh? Oh, 
for sure. I'm not sure if you can see the little valve. Anyways, I'll tell you what. Take my word for it. Get one. Get a Fumoto valve. It makes your life a lot easier when you need to change the oil. Seriously. You can change the oil in about five minutes, five to ten minutes tops with a Fumoto valve. I'll tell you what, one thing I don't like about this car, it does burn a little bit of oil. Not as bad as some people, but it does burn some oil. Um, I'd probably have to put in about half a quart to one quart between oil changes. And um, it's eh, it's not too bad. I, I can live with it. Um, I, I, I replaced the spark plugs on this car. I think it was around like 65,000 miles or so. And you know what? They're down there. Honestly, I did a YouTube uh, search on how to do it yourself. And surprisingly, it was doable. Okay. Now it's very tight fitting in there. So you kind of need to have smaller hands. And um, you'll be wiggling those wrenches and sockets around a lot just to just to finally get the spark plugs in and out of there. Um, I use 0W20, either Mobile One or Valvoline. Both of them have worked really well for me. Okay. Another thing that I really hate about the Subaru Forester, and it might not be the car itself, it just might be the fact of the batteries, they suck. Okay, this is a 2015 Subaru Forester. This is my third one. Okay, now it's what, seven, eight years later, so, you know, maybe it's not that bad, but it is my third battery that I'm on, the first one lasted maybe two, three years, the original one lasted two, three years, and then the other one before that, another two to three years, and who knows how long this one's gonna last, um, I don't know, tell me about you guys, I mean, how long, how long did your original battery last, um, I've got a 2017 Prius Prime, it's five, six years later. I'm still on the original battery. So, you know, kind of a difference. What else? Um, so, 112,000 miles. I have replaced all the fluids in this vehicle. The only fluid I have not yet replaced yet is the antifreeze. I've been kind of lazy with the antifreeze. I did the transmission fluid change um, on my own in this vehicle, and it's actually pretty darn easy um tons of youtube videos out there thank you guys for putting those youtube videos out there on how to do things the transmission fluid change was really relatively easy um i also did the gear oil box on the back um or is that the differential fluid i did that one as well and recently um uh, you know what? I got over a hundred thousand miles on my brakes. So, um, I just changed the brakes out myself. And to be honest, very easy job. Do it yourself. Search YouTube. One thing that I notice is if you don't do it yourself, you're going to be throwing lots of money into your vehicles. So it's kind of pays off to be handy, but I'll tell you what, if you are capable of being handy, then do it yourself. If you're not, then you know, do your research on a really good mechanic who's um, honest and has good reviews, okay? Um, what else have I done to this car? Things that I hate, okay? I've gone through at least two wheel bearings, all right? I think I replaced three in here, but I know two were bad for sure. Guaranteed two were bad for sure. I replaced one axle... Um, and then I was like, oh, I, I replaced the right axle. It started clicking. So when I turned right, it was either, yeah, when I turned right, it would start clicking. So I think it was the left axle. Um, when you turn left, if it starts clicking, it's the right axle. Um, you can hear it. Generally, at least in my situation, it's been the two front axles. Now they give off certain types of sounds. Uh, obviously, the clicking noise is really common for the CV axles when you're turning uh, either left or right. Now, it's harder to distinguish when the wheel bearings are going out, okay? 
but um, you'll start to hear a couple things. You'll start to hear like a little humming or droning noise or sound. If you're starting to hear that stuff, that means your wheel bearings are going out, okay? Um, everything on this car, I do myself, okay? So I'm a YouTube mechanic in terms of I do it myself. And the brakes, the wheel bearings, the axles, I've done it all myself. The videos that you see on YouTube are um, pretty helpful. Now, I do have a couple tips. You know, I already did three wheel bearings on this car. I, the back one is actually easier than, than it, it shows on YouTube. Um, but I do recommend a couple things. I recommend you get a wheel bearing um, remover tool, okay? The remover tool, oh my God, these wheel bearings are a pain in the butt. Um, with the wheel bearing remover tool, you will, uh, it will make your job a lot easier, okay? Um, there's so many different types of wheel bearing uh, remover tools. Just search them on Amazon and you'll see some. I'll, t I'll actually, I'll show you what I have. Um, I'll show you what I have here in a little bit. But at the end of the video, I'll show you the tools that I use for that, for that, okay? Let's see. Long-term review. What do I like? It's quiet. It's comfortable. Um, this one has no eyesight, no high tech. Eh, it's fine. It's spacious enough. It's definitely a lot more spacious having that huge cargo rack on top. So it depends how big of a family you have. Average miles per gallon. Now, my wife drives this car and she drives it like a grandma. Again, that's exactly why we got over 100,000 miles on the brakes, on the original brakes. Um, I actually left the same original rotors on. I was not going to change it. It drives fine. You know, it's been at least 10,000 miles, uh, 5,000 miles at least with the new brakes. It's been driving fine. Same rotors. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, um, it's driven enough. It's it's good for road trips. I've driven it on the snow many times. I don't know. Everybody says their Subaru Forester is a freaking tank in the snow. You know, it it, it does the job. It did a good job. Um, would I say it's the best vehicle in the snow? No. Now, this one, again, is the base. It doesn't have all the fancy X mode and stuff like that, so... That's that's what I'm comparing it to. I've had other vehicles with a four-wheel drive. Um, like, honestly, I, I had a, a Toyota Highlander, a first generation, and a third, or in the latest generation, first and third generation Toyota Highlander. Oh my God, those things were a freaking tank in the snow. No joke, four-wheel drive. It was insane how good they were in the snow. Um, this one does good in the snow too, but I, I don't know if I'd rave about it and say, yeah, it's, it's, you know, my top three. Um, it does fine. It does the job. I've driven it in a foot of snow, but, um, you know, that's it. Uh, what have I done to this car? Anything? Let me think. I, I don't do too much to this car, to be honest. I don't do any, oh, one slight modification I did do. I just, I don't know if you can see it. You guys know what I did from here? Ah, uh, you know, I added that little tailpipe. Yeah. Actually, I should clean it. It looks kind of dirty. I put that on just to make it look cooler. Oh, shoot, the rain's coming. Um, let's see. What else did I do? You know, I change the windshield wipers on a regular basis, probably at least once or twice a year. Same with the wiper blades. I use Aquapel for the windows, windshield, and everything else like that. Um, yeah, I really like the look of the tires, though. They look cool. Um, I love the cargo carrier. Oh, miles per gallon. Okay, my wife drives it like a grandma. She gets about 28 to 29 miles per gallon okay i mean that's ridiculous 
for an all-wheel drive Subaru Forester. Again, this has the CVT transmission, so that's why you get better gas mileage. Honestly, I keep hearing all those horror stories about CVT transmission. And um, thankfully, I haven't had that problem yet. And I'll be honest with you, I think the reason why I, I have not had that problem with a CVT transmission is because I changed the transmission fluid, okay? And um, one time, actually, it was, it was right around like 70 to 80,000 miles, I think. And the car was just starting to show signs of driving rough, okay? Like, it wasn't, I guess, in a sense, like, quote, shifting smooth. It's a freaking CVT. It's not going to shift, right? But it felt like it was downshifting or something like that, and it wasn't upshifting like it should have been. And um, after I changed the CVT transmission fluid, oh, man, it started driving smooth, smooth like butter again okay so if you're like past sixty thousand miles and your car is not like quote shifting as smooth as it should like it's in down gear and it should be going up gear and it's not like you know changing speeds very well and it seems kind of a little bit off seriously you, I hope you change your CVT transmission because these bad boys are known to have transmission problems and you do not want them to have a problem. I'm going to go sit inside because it's starting to rain on me. There's the rain coming. Um, I just put one of these, uh, what do you call it, steering wheel covers on i like it you know this is the cheap one but it works really good actually i got this one if you guys want to know where i got it from i got it from ross okay ross dress for less it's good stuff um for cell phone holders i use the magnetic one or this holder i've got the uh magnetic plate on my car what else guys um the heated seats work great on this car. I'll tell you what, the heated seats work really nice. Um, no issues with that. The sunroof is good. It's been solid. My wife doesn't use it, but I like it. But although with a cargo carrier, it kind of sucks using the sunroof, to be honest. Um, hmm. Let's see. So I've changed all my fluids in this vehicle. I'm religious about it. I've done my my spark plugs already. I did, I did clean out the mass airflow sensor. That was actually really easy to do. I don't know if it made a difference. It might have. Maybe it made it a little bit smoother. I'll tell you what. One problem that I did have on this vehicle, and it was my fault. One time I was changing the oil, and I put too much oil in this car, and it just started making this car like chug, 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 you know, like kind of sputter a little bit. That was because, fellas, I added way too much oil. I was like almost a whole quart over the fill line, over the maximum fill line. It makes a difference, you know. Do not overfill your oil when you do oil changes. Now, granted, I have the Fomoto valve, which allows me to easily remove as much oil as I want. And to shut it off real quick is a snap. Um... I recommend you get yourself one, fellas. Seriously, it's a lifesaver. And if you have a Fumoto valve, tell me how it's been working out for you. Um, you know, I'm thinking about maybe a remote start for this vehicle, but I'm just worried about messing with the electrical components. Now, I wouldn't do that part myself. I would actually outsource that and have someone else do it. But um, I just don't want to mess around with this car's electronics, you know. This car is a finicky car. You kind of really need to be careful in how you do things mechanically with it. Um, you know, same thing like with the uh, CV, re replacing the CV joints. Um, shh, geez, Louise, fellas, those parts, everything's expensive. The parts are expensive. I don't know. You tell me how much you guys are paying for your wheel bearings and CVTs. 
uh, they're a lot. Okay. But I'll tell you one thing I did do and, and you guys can give it a shot too. give it a try. So I go to this Subaru dealership, um, actually, uh, in Oregon, cause I'm out there in Oregon a lot and I don't have to pay sales tax cause I live out there as well as Washington. But when I'm in Oregon, I'll go to the, um, uh, Subaru parts department over there, um, at the Beaverton car Subaru place. And I, I, you know, I asked him cause I started buying like, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm buying a decent amount of parts from them. You know, I mean, shoot, I bought three wheel bearings, two CVTs and other miscellaneous, uh, maintenance items. And I ask him, like, are, you know, are, are you willing to give me a discount? Can, you know, can I please have a discount on these? Is that possible? Be nice about it. Be cool about it. And you know what? Shoot, they gave me a discount. Okay. So 10% on, you know, on a thousand bucks worth of, of parts, man, it helps out. Anything helps out this day, this day and age. So, um, yeah, CVTs are not cheap. Um, Wheel bearings are not cheap, and uh, sometimes it's cheaper to go online, check online too, and see if it's cheaper to go online than to go to the Subaru um, dealership. Um, but you know what? It does not hurt fellas to ask for a discount and if they're willing to do that. So don't be afraid to ask. What's the worst they can say? The worst they can say is no, and the most you can get is money saved back in your pocket okay that is one thing that is a downside to this car is the parts are freaking expensive um yeah especially the freaking wheel bearings and cvts in this car and this and the cv joints you know um i replaced the headlights on this car with leds Yes, I know. A lot of you guys are going to hate me because I'm the Subaru Forester with a freaking bright ass headlights, real bright ass headlights. Okay. Um, you know, I don't get flashed too many times with uh, other people's headlights, so it must not be that bad. Um, what kind of LEDs do you guys use on your headlights? Okay, now this is a 2017, so I used to have the halogen bulbs. And I'll tell you one thing I hated about the halogen bulbs. They freaking kept burning out fast. Okay, especially when you get the nice halogen bulbs, the higher end ones that are supposed to have brighter output. And honestly, those things freaking were bright, too, in addition to the LEDs. I mean, both of them were bright as hell. And the difference is the LEDs are cheap and they last forever. Okay, so that's the difference with my LEDs. Um, so if you guys in your comments tell me what are you guys using for your LEDs? I forgot what I'm using in mine, but they seem to work really good. And, um, what else, you know, I, I, I do all my air filters, oil filters and everything in, in cabin filters on a regular basis as well. You can buy all these things online. It's a freaking better deal, I think. Um, what else, you know, um, it's not my car, it's my wife's car, but I maintain it. So... If it was my car, honestly, guys, I mean, you guys are probably all going to hate me, but I like Toyota, okay? I'm a Toyota guy. I've got that black RAV4 over there. You see that one right over there? That one's got 207,000 miles on it, okay? That's about two times more miles than this Subaru Forester. And that black one, man, that thing's a freaking tank, all right? Like, man, it... It's quiet, it drives smooth, still gets reasonable gas mileage. I mean, it's got some ups and downs with it. That, that, that year is a 2002 Black RAV4. That's a 2002, and it's 207,000 miles, and it's still running really good with minimal uh, repairs. Um, just regular maintenance. You know, the wheel bearings are all the same on that thing, and it's got over 200,000 miles. Same CV joints, no issues with it, okay? I put a new windshield in it, but hey, you know what? This one needs a new windshield too. It's got cracks everywhere. It's got, two, it's got some cracks and whatnot. So, um, what else, guys? Uh, what do you guys want to know about, about my experience owning this car or at least maintaining it for my wife? I mean, I do drive it. 
just definitely not as much as her. Um, it's got the heated seats, you know, so I guess that's it for now, guys. If you uh, have any questions, put it in the comments. Give me a thumbs up, okay? So this is for a 2015 Subaru Forester. Long-term review with, again, let's see, how many miles? Oh, 215,000 miles, 212,000 miles, I'm sorry, 212,000 miles. Um, right now I'm averaging 26.7 miles per gallon, all right? So I lost a little bit and I'll tell you, the reason why I lost the miles per gallon on this car is because of the cargo carrier on top. I lost about two miles per gallon having it maybe two 2.5 at the most but otherwise it's still pretty dang good mileage it really is okay i mean that's pretty decent mileage um there is one more problem and it's just started there's like a freaking rattling coming from the exhaust um i just started the car i'm hoping i'm hoping that it's going to pop up and i can show you guys here on the video what it sounds like but there's like this little rattle and it goes, uh, it comes right from the exhaust. I don't know if the, I, I've searched YouTube and there is, there has been other Subaru Foresters with these rattles. Um, it's annoying. Okay. Right now it comes and goes. Um, it just kind of depends. It's not, it's not uh, consistent rattle. I might have to go over there with some metal zip ties and, uh, and, go to the exhaust follow it and see if there's where the problem is let's see if you guys can hear it ah, there's the exhaust I don't know it just is it's not showing up right now but give it a thumbs up, guys. Let me know what other questions you have. Oh, real quick, I'll tell you what I did do. I actually, um, my wife is short. She got short legs. She's a short girl. I added extenders on this vehicle. If you can see it, the brake pads, the brake pads and the gas pedal, both of them have extenders on them. My wife is short, so just wanted to let you guys know, hey, you know what? Even short people can drive this car as long as you got extenders on it. Over and out, fellas. Give it one of these. Bye. All right, guys. Here's the tools that I use for the wheel bearing remover. Got, got to have a dead blow hammer. It makes a, it makes a difference. Um, torque wrench. Okay, I've got a tech ton torque wrench off Amazon you know I think it worked okay so far looks like that there's the torque torque stuff on it um, look at this look at this bad boy look at that bad boy this thing goes on the uh, the uh, you put the nuts through the you put the bolt through the nuts <laughs> yeah you know pretty sick right it works and then you, you take the dead blow hammer and then you're going to hit hit it here you're going to hit it here and you're going to wiggle it until the the wheel bearing comes off so make sure you guys have uh, knee pads for you sick bastards and uh three ton jacks uh some jack stands just in case for your safety so it doesn't fall on you and kill you good to have a hammer so this is your bonus footage some additional tools for uh taking off your wheel bearing